Welcome to a new vlog. In this video I'm gonna show you how I assembled this awesome looking VFD clock kit. Everything that's needed to assemble this kit is included inside the package. All of the SMT components are pre-assembled on the PCB so it should be a fairly straightforward task so that anyone can put one of these together. As a bonus feature even though it's not included in the default kit that you get this clock supports a GPS receiver for syncing the date and time automatically. And on top of that you also get this small remote control that you can use to control all of the functionality of the clock. And that's pretty neat if you ask me. I got this particular kit from Banggood.com and you'll find the link in the description of the video if you are interested in getting one. I think it's important to watch this video before you start the assembly uh, because you might find some important inadvertencies between the provided user manual and instructions and the actual kit that uh, you receive as I will be showing later. But nonetheless this is still a very cool clock kit and it has a bunch of additional features like it can show date and time, uh, it can show temperature, it has automatic uh, brightness control through one of these LDR resistors and it has a real-time uh, clock chip with a backup battery so it, it's loaded with features, it really is a, a really nice clock kit. This is what you'll be receiving in the box and this is all needed for a functional clock and if you are missing any of the stuff shown here you might be unable to complete your clock build. And like I previously said, the GPS module is optional, but depending on where you live, you might not get GPS reception in an apartment building, for example, so it might be useless for your particular use case anyway. This video is sponsored by PCBWay.com and if you are into electronics, you should try designing and ordering your own PCBs, but not just that, you can even get custom manufactured enclosures or parts for your projects through services like 3D printing, CNC, milling, injection molding, everything under one brand, pcbway.com, so check them out. So to start the assembly, I'm going to prepare the two boards because even though it looks like one, these are actually two individual PCBs in here. You just need to separate them by snapping along the V-scored lines. This is a technique that's used for uh, efficiency during manufacturing. It's called panelizing and they just stick two or more designs together in a panel which is connected by these rails. But they're meant to be separated later on. Sometimes when you separate these boards you can be left with some sharp edges right where it snapped. Uh, if that's the case you can just use some sandpaper to clean the edges. You have to be careful when uh, uh, trying to snap these uh, to not put a lot of stress on the uh, components on the board so try not to, to bend or twist the PCB too much because that might cause cracks in the uh, solder joints. So what I like to do when I have these uh, uh, long cuts like this is to just rest it on a flat surface and just try to uh, break it away like this and I believe this method puts less stress on the uh, PCB itself. Next if we take a look at the boards we notice all of the surface mount components have already been assembled for this kit and all we have to do is assemble these through hole components and we have a mercury switch an IR receiver, an LDR which is this uh, light dependent resistor, uh, we have a temperature sensor, a buzzer and these two uh, through hole connectors. It doesn't matter in which order you assemble these but some of them are polarized so it's important to get the orientation right and to solder them correctly to ensure good electrical and mechanical connection without overheating them and without damaging uh, the very small surrounding components. And I'm going to start with the LDR. The orientation of this part is not important and as you can see I'm not using a large amount of solder, just enough to create that nice conical solder joint shape. My soldering iron is set to 300 degrees Celsius and this easily uh, melts the solder and creates these nice solder joints. The buzzer is also a polarized component, the short lead is the cathode so make sure you install the cathode or the negative pin towards a Q2 transistor on the white uh, marked pad. The mercury switch needs to be installed horizontally, make sure you don't stress the component leads too much as they can break away quite easily 
and the orientation on uh, this one doesn't matter either it's not polarized next we have the ir sensor the orientation on this one does matter so make sure you install it like shown in the video Now when it comes to soldering the uh, DS18B20 uh, digital temperature sensor, this one doesn't follow the silkscreen printing on the PCB, so you should install it on this side where the uh, big uh, Maxim chip resides and the flat side of the uh, package should face the exterior of the board like so. And it's always good practice to uh, leave a bit of length on the leads of these temperature sensors like do not insert it fully um, right next to the uh, PCB leave just a little bit of length on the sensor because that helps to decouple it from the temperature of the PCB the goal of this sensor is to measure the ambient temperature and not the temperature of the board uh, for the same reason the designer of this PCB has made this long cutout so such as to avoid temperature coupling from this side of the PCB to the area where the sensor resides because these pins are so close together this one is probably more difficult to do and you might get some solder bridging in here um, some uh, gel flux like the one that I'm using uh, will definitely help you to remove uh, the solder bridges if they occur the female pin header is supposed to go on the same side as the mercury switch and same as before I'm going to add a small drop of flux this will help me to get the first solder joint going the most difficult part is probably the one where you figure out the orientation of the VFD2 because various sources claim you can identify pin 22 because it's shorter but I could not figure out which pin is shorter on my tube other sources claim you can identify pins 6, 7 and 8 because they are not connected to anything internally to the tube but I couldn't identify those either. All pins seem to be connected inside my tube. And to add to this confusion, the tube that I received doesn't even have 22 pins but instead just 19 pins. While the footprint on the PCB is for 22 pins. So how are you supposed to connect these two? We'll start by identifying pin 1 of the VFD tube. It should be the one connected to this thick a wire running across the back of the tube so I suggest you use that as a reference pin 1 should go into this pad which is connected to ground and the tube digits should be facing the back of the uh, pin header so it, it should be something like this then start going counterclockwise and connect pins 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 skip the pads numbered 6, 7 and 8 on the PCB as those are not connected to anything then we will continue with pin 6 of the tube uh, going to the ninth pad of the PCB that's the trick to get it correctly installed and I'll include a drawing on screen to better show you what I mean and before doing the actual soldering uh, make sure your pins are nice and straight and you have a 10 millimeter gap between the PCB and the tube bottom uh, because of the mismatch in the pin numbers you also might get the tube slightly rotated and as you can see the pins are slightly bent because uh, with great care you grab the tube and you kind of twist it in the correct position but be careful not to break any of the pins this is how my soldering looks like after uh, it's completely done and the leads have been shortened not great but not terrible either once you have completed the soldering uh, you can connect the two boards together like so you can get the correct orientation because these two holes need to match with these two holes and this one needs to match with this one and we can test it using the um, mini USB cable and we should get a hello on the display yep and we got the hello and now it started showing the clock I did not hear a beep from the buzzer and I suppose uh, the manual said something about hearing a beep from the buzzer uh, I think I got it installed the right way around not sure what's uh, what's up with that but I'm pretty happy that I have the uh, display working
if you don't get anything on the display immediately remove power something is not right so there is no need to let the magic smoke escape just go back and double check your connections now for the mechanical assembly I will be using this detailed exploded view of the whole project just to figure out where everything goes and I will carefully place every screw spacer washer and nut as indicated here. If you're looking for this diagram check the links in the description below I will put a link to this. It probably took about a good 15 minutes of fiddling around with the, all of the screws and washers but the end result should look something like this and I'll put a link in the description below to a website with uh, many more of these uh, mechanical drawings to help you during assembly and there will also be a link to the website where I got my clock kit so should you decide to order one and I'm pretty happy with how this clock kit turned out I think um, I might give this one away to a friend who is decorating his home with some industrial type accents. I think this type of clock will fit very nicely in his decor. Uh, there's also a lot of functionality built into the clock and you can control it via this remote control but I'm not going to get into that because it's all uh, in the user manual which I will link in the description below as a PDF. I hope this video was useful if you're looking for some instructions on how to assemble this kit or maybe it has inspired you to get one of these clock kits and work on it as a nice weekend project I highly recommend it. Let me know in the comments below if you think this clock looks nice and uh, you know hitting that like button or the dislike button to send me some feedback is really helpful. If you'd like to support the channel you can do so with as little as one dollar per month on Patreon and you will also get access to some behind the scenes images as well as early releases of these videos. Thank you for watching and I will be seeing you next time.